Today, we're going to be rebuilding the Florida Gators. Thank you to Osball2012 for giving me the idea for this video, saying they were ranked 7th in the nation 3 years ago, so they need the rebuild. But before we can get into that, if you want me to do your team as a rebuild, let me know down in the comments below, and also make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more rebuilds to come, and also other college football content. Let's take a quick look at the team we're going to be rebuilding, and we have an 84 overall senior quarterback, but that's not the bright spot of this offense, is it is DJ Lagway, who is a scrambling quarterback, and he's a freshman from Willis, Texas, and this is awesome because we can possibly win a national championship before he leaves for the NFL and that is the goal in today's video so stick around to see if we'll hit it for running backs we have an amazing running back starting at an 87 overall but it's a 10 overall fall off from there as Tayon Webb and Jaden Ba are the guys right behind him and they're both freshmen so we do have a lot of talent to work with our wide receivers aren't bad either as our best receiver is an 86 overall with 93 speed but the guy that I like the most on here is Aiden Mizell, who has 96 speed and 97 acceleration. I'm a huge fan of speedy receivers, and the fact that he's 6'2 just makes him even better. There's nothing too crazy at tight end, so I definitely think we need to do some recruiting in the tight end department, because I remember Florida to have some really good tight ends, some superior killers, if you ask me. The offensive line is not the best either, as we have an 80 overall left tackle, a 77 overall left guard, an 87 overall center a right guard who's a 79 overall and a right tackle who's a 76 overall we definitely want to get all of our offensive linemen up over an 80 overall by the end of this rebuild because we know we're going against teams in the sec who have amazing pass rushes so we need to be ready for them and talking about amazing pass rushes we don't really have the best one because our left end is an 84 overall our right end is an 80 overall and we only have three defensive tackles on this team and our best one is an 80 overall we really need to get that up in recruiting because like I said the SEC has elite pass rushers and we need to be part of that team one thing that really sticks out to me is the linebackers as we have a junior linebacker who's an 80 overall Justice Boone and right behind him is TJ Searcy who's a 78 overall the same thing happens with middle linebackers as there's an 84 overall junior and a 78 overall middle linebacker who's a freshman right behind him and again with right outside linebacker we have a young right outside linebacker who's an 80 overall so having young linebackers who will be able to develop throughout this rebuild is very vital cornerback isn't anything too fancy we do have a good lockdown corner in jason marshall jr but he's a senior so he's going to be leaving us after one season but the next best guy is jakeem jackson who's an 83 overall the next guy is corman mclean who is an 82 overall and this is really good because our secondary needs to be top notch especially because georgia has two young players with 98 speed and to help us with those guys we have a guy like jordan castell who has 88 speed and is only a soft sophomore so he will develop nicely and it's the same way with our sophomore strong safety Bryce Thornton who has 88 speed and 92 acceleration and for this first season I think it is an amazing idea to redshirt DJ Lagway he's not going to get any playing time so we might as well get four years of eligibility with him when he's like an 84 85 overall like I said when I was going over the team defensive line is something I really wanted to work on because the SEC is known for having a good defensive line that is why we're going after these five defensive linemen who are all studs and I mean it because we have three five stars on here and two four stars everyone seems to have a little bit of interest in us and it'll be a big deal if we can get them another guy I want to bring up is Alex Wims who is a defensive tackle has interest in our school and we only have to beat out teams like Texas A&M and TCU which I think we can do just like the defensive line I wanted to go get good offensive linemen as well and that is why we're going after guys like Rashad Pack and Emmanuel Turner who are both four and five star recruits and have interest in this school it's the same way with these offensive guards who all have interest in us and we only have to beat out certain teams like University of Miami, Michigan, and University of Miami again. But I think we can do it. The other guy that I'm going after is this tight end, Rasheem Willingham, who is very interested in our school. We're already winning and we are the only team that has given him an offer. About midway through the season, we've gotten a ton of recruits so far. We were able to pick up three out of the five right ends. We were able to get this scrambling quarterback the right guard we were going after, the tight end, a good cornerback and a good halfback and we are going after this middle linebacker who has a week eight visit coming up and we're also going after a couple more guys and some good fast receivers. So I'll catch up with you guys in a couple weeks. 
to show you how this recruiting class is coming along. We're going to hop into this game in year number one, Florida versus Georgia. It's a massive game and it's a ton of fun to be around people who are excited for this game. So let's get in there and let's see if we can bring Florida a victory. Georgia absolutely smacks us in Jacksonville 59 to 21. And I don't think Florida showed up at all. I think they forgot the game was played in Jacksonville and they were in Athens, but let's move on. Will Howard is your 2024 Heisman Trophy winner. We have a lot of people who want to transfer out and we have to make sure that we can get as many guys as possible from this. So we have to be smart about it as we definitely want to keep this center. Let's see if we can persuade him and we're not able to. What about this tight end? And it's failed again. Oh, I got to go against, I got to go for someone that I can actually get. How about this 73 overall free safety? And it's failed. Even though it was a medium success rate, it still failed, which is very, very unfortunate. Let's go after this free safety and it failed. We were not able to persuade any of these players to stay. In the transfer portal, we're going after a halfback, strong safety, two wide receivers, another tight end, a decent quarterback, and another free safety, just to try to fill out this roster a little bit and make it the best possible recruiting class. Here is a look at our signing class. We got two quarterbacks in that class, two running backs. We also got a good wide receiver who's got like 95 speed or 97 speed, something crazy like that. We got a ton of tight ends and this guy went to Georgia Tech. I hope he has a good education there because he's not winning football games. We got a good left tackle. We got two good guards. And we got one center. Just kidding. He actually went to Old Miss. I thought we would get him, but I guess not. We got a ton of right ends. We got no defensive tackles, but we can remove right ends there. We got an outside linebacker, no middle linebackers, three cornerbacks, two safeties, three safeties actually. And that's pretty much it for this class. We have to do some position changes. Let's take a look at some of the athletes we got in this class because I know there was a couple. And we got Sergio Fana Fernandez. Sergio Fazande. My bad. Oops. He's a really good halfback, and that's where we're going to put him at because he goes up five overalls, which is kind of insane. And then there was one other guy, Matthew Yazzie. I think he's a like a really good pass blocker, but it doesn't look like he's that at all no he's actually terrible like that so either we put him at fullback or we put him at right end or right outside linebacker or left outside linebacker i think we're gonna go left outside linebacker or actually right outside linebacker because we need more players in that position so i'd say this was a pretty good signing class i'm not gonna lie let's see where it ranks in the national signing and we're actually ranked 17 with one five star and 14 four stars and eight three stars probably one of the best classes i've ever had playing this game and the fact that we started out as a level one coach really really makes this class even better here's the training results and we jumped up a lot actually as we now have an 89 overall team with a 90 overall defense one of the biggest jump ups is going to be dj lagway after redshirting last season he's now up four overalls to an 84 and i think we're going to go off with him sadly our wide receivers don't jump up all that much but there's still small improvements that we can't see and we have a big boost to our offensive line as we have an 86 overall left tackle now an 81 overall left guard a 90 overall center a 82 overall right guard and a 77 overall right tackle who we got this season and like i wanted to do our defensive line is now up to an 87 overall and then our right end is up to an 82 overall. And then defensive tackle, we have an 87 overall defensive tackle. Our outside linebacker is an 86 overall. And then the other one is an 82 overall with our middle linebacker being an 89 overall with a backup that's an 88 overall. For cornerbacks, we don't have that much anymore. So we definitely need to focus on that in the recruiting this year as we have an 85 overall as our top cornerback and the 73 is our lowest. Our strong safety is an 80 overall with a backup that's a 79. And then for free safety, we have a 71 overall. Here in year number two, we're trying to go after this quarterback because he looks absolutely solid. We're also going after more offensive linemen and more defensive linemen and also going after secondary because those are some really big needs but also going over your average wide receiver and athlete because this one looks amazing as he's a five star gem which basically means he's a six star player so i would love to get him he's already interested in our school but we need to make sure that he commits to our school touching here ahmad tate miami has jumped us in the rankings 
to get him. The only reason why is because I cannot schedule him on a visit even though we are in his top five. EA, please fix it because I'm losing a five-star recruit because of it. Otherwise, he would already be committed to my team and I'm not even joking. We're gonna hop into this game against Tennessee because we have some big time recruits coming even though I can't schedule recruits for my five-star guy, I was able to schedule a couple other recruits to come out to this game. So let's get this win and make sure that we can secure a couple more big recruits. And it looks like we're gonna win this one 17 to 35 as we absolutely dominate the Vols. And that's a big win because now we're gonna see if we get some good recruits. And because of that big win, we get three massive recruits and that is so exciting. We're gonna hop into this game against seven and oh Georgia in the Florida Georgia Bowl because we have to beat them by the time this rebuild is over and we win 47 to 45 I had to step into the end of that game to run it in for a touchdown and I had a perfect play planned out for it so we finally beat Georgia and honestly we're doing really good this season I think we're five and three now that we beat Georgia so we should be in the top 25 and with that big win over Georgia we got Frank Jerry to commit and Ron Perry Ron Perry and Frank Jerry love the names EA and Don Coomer <laughs> love that three massive recruits here two two three stars and one four star I would like to introduce to you the list of players that I can't get on a visit because EA is stupid and doesn't know how to fix their stuff top five schedule a visit can't top five top three actually schedule a visit can't 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 like EA, what are we doing here, man? What are we doing here? It, it doesn't seem like it's that hard from a coding perspective, from my mind. It's if top five equals true, then schedule visit equals available. Oh my God. Oh. Fix it or I'll fix it for you. Trust me. I know we're going to finish this season eight and four. We had some big losses early in the year, like a loss to Texas and rank one Texas A&M and Miami. But other than that, I feel like we had a really good season. We stepped it up a ton from last year. So hopefully the players can get better. Our recruits can come in and make us a better team overall. We are going to be able to play in the tax slayer bowl against TCU. Hopefully it's another win so that we can get nine and four but it's a bowl game that doesn't really matter. So it is what it is. Avery Johnson from Kansas State is your Heisman this year. Cade Klubnick came in second, but Avery Johnson's only a junior, which is kind of crazy to see. And we did win the Tax Slayer Bowl. Not really super cool, but it is a win. And they named it after us, the Gator Bowl. As for players leaving, there's only one guy that we can persuade to come back, and it's very high that we do, and it's success. So we do get to keep this 89 overall receiver, Eugene Wilson III, for this upcoming season. If you're still watching this video, go down to the comments down below and say, we hate you, Creed Whitmore, and just see what the other comment section says. I don't get that many comments. I'm trying to gain traction here, please. Please, please, I'm begging. After the transfer portal, we got a ton of four-star players and some good three-stars. And we had one of the top classes in the nation because we got 30 players and we were ranked at 16. We were 17 last year. So that is a big step up. And by big, I mean literally just one, but it's okay. Going into year number three, we have four 90 overall players after training boost. And DJ Lagway is an 87 overall quarterback. We also have four cornerbacks that are over an 82 overall. We have a 91 overall junior middle linebacker, a 90 overall defensive tackle, a 90 overall right end, and an 89 overall left end. And with the last two recruiting classes, I feel like I've laid the ground for a dominant team in the future. So we're gonna turn auto recruiting on because it doesn't do too bad of a job and it would definitely get you some four or five stars. And roughly at the midway point of the season, we're number 12 in the polls, but we lost to NC State in the first week. Otherwise, we'd be six and one. And we also lost to number eight, Missouri. And this week we go up against Georgia. So we're gonna sim to the end of the season and pray that we can make the college football playoffs. And in the 2026 season, Gunnar Stockton has won the Heisman. And we have made it into the college football playoffs and we're gonna be going against number seven seed, Tennessee. And here's what the playoffs look like. We're gonna have to go through Tennessee, 
Oregon, most likely Jacksonville State. Just kidding, I hope not, because that's not even that fun of a game. And then on the other side, I'm going to take a gamble here, and I'm going to say Clemson's going to make it. And it looks like we won our playoff game, so that means that we're going to go up against Oregon Ducks. Oregon is the number one team in the nation, and they are on par with us when it comes to offense and just playing overall, but they have a 90 overall defense, so this is a little scary. And it looks like we have won the Orange Bowl 27 to 19, a very close game, an absolute nail biter, but we had a two point lead going in, and Oregon Ducks scored in garbage time, so I didn't really feel like showing you. And we're going to be playing the UAB Blazers in the next round of the playoffs, and they are a lower overall than us and a lower seed, so hopefully we can go in there and smoke them and we don't really the smoke them as it's a seven point game but like again with Oregon it was really like a blowout until the end and they scored in garbage time so that's just light work for us as DJ Lagway had 288 yards and two touchdowns with a 72 percent completion rating that is wild and in the national championship, we're going to be playing the Michigan Wolverines. They are an 89 overall with a 90 overall offense and an 89 overall defense. So let's get into this game and see if we're able to stir something up and make them go crazy. Here we are in the national championship going against the Michigan Wolverines. We're going to sim this game and we're going to pray that we win because I truly don't want to do another season. I've been recording for four hours now because recruiting just takes a long time for me because I want to make sure I get the best recruits possible. And it's not really my, not really my favorite thing to do is sit there and recruit for four hours on end. I love this game, though. It's really fun. Let's get the super sim in. We're going to sim to the end of the game. And Michigan scores first, getting three points. The ball's going back and forth. Michigan gets another field goal, but Florida answers back with a touchdown. Michigan goes back and answers with a touchdown, while Florida answers with a touchdown. Michigan scores before halftime. Florida goes down and scores after halftime. And they score again in the third quarter. Michigan ties it up at 28 all. Florida answers with seven. It's 35-35, 42-42, down in the... Last little bit. Last and it looks like Florida has won the national championship. It went to overtime, well, and oh so my gosh, that was a hell of a game. Congratulations, Florida fans. You are finally national championships after a long, game, long wait. 48 to 45 is your final time. score. You say, Let me know down in the comments below what team you want me to rebuild next. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be doing a whole lot more College Football 25 content. Peace.